Well, no watercolor today. I'm doing pen and ink. I got a hankering to do it. And we're going to study someone who is sensational. One of the best, actually. And when you want to get into a medium and really learn it well, study the masters. Actually do it. Get into their minds. See what it is they're thinking. Sort of. I wish this guy were alive today, but we're going to do the next best thing. We're just going to look at a lot of his work and try to recreate some of his techniques. I don't want to get into your mind at all. Hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, I have definitely been in the mind of a master uh, this week, and it has been totally, totally enjoyable. That master's name is Franklin Booth. Now, if you don't know who Franklin Booth is, I suggest you do a little bit of looking and reading and research. <laughs> he is probably one of the best pen and ink artists uh, known to man. Well, at least in history. He has inspired so many. Uh, just looking at his work through this book. Uh, got this book last year. I've, I've looked at his work before, but I never had such an exhaustive book. This is a great book if you want to see a lot of his work. But, oh man, I mean, just his trees alone. If you've been around this channel long, you know me and trees. Just, wow. I mean, look at that. And I don't care whether you paint in watercolor or oils or gouache or just do pen and ink or pencil. That's amazing. And there's not going to be any watercolor in this video. We're going to do pen and ink, and we'll talk about the value of that, the benefits of that, no matter what you paint. I mean, pen and ink, right? It's just a great companion to watercolor anyway. So, uh, yeah, just look at this. I mean, more incredible trees. His figures are great. You know, his ground details, foreground, are awesome. His clouds. This right here on the left is the one that inspired me to do this piece. I won't be copying it per se, but I will be doing a lot of elements from this that are similar. I'll do my own drawing, but I wanted to get really into his mind in terms of technique. You know, how he lays down his values, how he manages values with his strokes. And we'll talk more about that. I really wanted to make this not just a master study, but a technique study. And all of this tone is done with lines, with parallel lines. It's just a really fascinating technique. I mean, look at that tree on the right and the light. The way he can manage light with a simple line. Well, it's not a simple line. It's a very complex line. <laughs> it's an amazingly complex line. And that was the challenge to me is... How to do it. Uh, Bernie Wrightson, uh, you know, his masterpiece, The Frankenstein, he was a comic illustrator, but uh, he was undoubtedly heavily inspired by Franklin Booth. I'm very inspired by Bernie Wrightson. I mean, I probably will do a study at some point just off of Bernie Wrightson. So with that inspiration and those ideas, I set out to do my own drawing, um, just composing some trees that are similar uh, to his. I decided to use this Jetstream pen. Now, I've had a grouping of these that I got as a sampler. And this is the reason here, these uh, technical pens, these are like some of the finest ballpoint pens. The top one is a, two, is a 0.28 and the bottom was a 0.38. Uh, but even this one, this white bodied one that I'm using here is a very fine point. So I had like a variety of sizes. And the reason I'm using it is is curiosity. I've had them sitting around for a while and thought they'd make a great inking pen. I could just as easily use a micron. So don't get caught up in which pen I'm using here. Probably if you're a beginner and just learning uh, pen and ink, I usually recommend start out with microns. Because they're unit weight liners, easy to use, permanent. Uh, but what interested me about these is how dark and black the ink was. Similar to a gel pen, but these are not gel pens. They're called ballpoint pens. And it uses an oil-based ink. 
that uh, is waterproof. So if you've ever used gel pens or ballpoint pens, um, they are not completely waterproof. There's a little bit of water solubility. These are more permanent and they dry fast. Now if you try to if you put water down right after you've inked something, you might get a little bit of of movement. But uh, you know, movement of the the dye or the pigment. But once they dry, they're they're pretty permanent. And you can get uh, unlike ballpoint pens, which tend to kind of their densest color is like a deep gray. These are blacker. Maybe not quite as black as like an India ink, but pretty close. Anyway, the the choice here really had nothing to do. Uh, it, the inking was the same whether I was using a micron or even a dip pen. This is going to be a tedious process as you can see already and I didn't want to get into a dip pen because it would have taken me even longer. Although that's probably what Franklin Booth used. A dip pen with India ink. So as I got into this, uh, you'll see some differences between my style and his if you looked closely. Um, but for the most part, I tried to hold back on habits. I've done inking for years, and so I've fallen into some habits. And I tried to observe very carefully what he did and laying down his lines. And that's why this is a technique study. Almost everything he lays down are parallel lines. He does little to almost no cross hatching where a deeper layer of color is, comes at a cross like a angle over the other hatching. Instead what he'll do is he'll just go in and make a darker line. He'll either fatten the line or just make more lines in between. So I set that as my main parameter. Hatching parallel lines and if I wanted those lines and that tone to be darker. I just went back over that area with the same strokes in the same direction. Did not know how this would feel to do it because it's, it's something I don't normally do. But as I was doing it, oh, I was enjoying it. I mean, I was really enjoying it. Here you see me using uh, the finest point in the Jetstream series, which was a, a 0.28. And you, if you want to use microns, you can approximate the same, you know, fineness with their, I think they have a 0 0.005. So as I was doing this, uh, it was just fun. I mean, it was just fun. Yes, it was tedious and meticulous, but I just, I gave myself over to it. I uh, just decided I'm going to do this and enjoy the process. Um, now the scale of my strokes was not at all uh, like his. I think he works a lot bigger. And because of the limitations of this video, I just couldn't do something really big. I've been working on it for, you know, two weeks. As it was, I spent probably 10 hours on this piece. And it's pretty small. Um, but uh, his scale of strokes are much, much finer. And that just indicates to me that he worked larger. And what you mo mostly see in the book uh, is a reduction, but I could still approximate the style. You know, I could still approximate the technique. What I was really focused on, what I really wanted to study was how he managed value, tone, tonal value. And he, that, that if I say anything about him being a master and he's a master at so many things, you know, drawing, composition. Oh man, we could do a whole video of this just on his composition. But uh, he is a master of managing his tonal values and composing a piece around those tonal values. And that's what I really wanted to study. I wanted to study how I would do that, how I could carefully manage these values so that the whole piece really just sort of popped you know popped where i wanted it to was subtle where i wanted it to be and it it was it was a process i thought there's so much latitude in this process uh just more than i really thought just really really fun and as it was developing as i was inking this i loved the, the 
the feel, the, the old worldish feel, almost like an engraving that it had. It just really excited me. I love his clouds. What he can do with clouds, uh, with just a simple line, <laughs> is amazing. And, I, you know, I studied that very carefully. I think one of the things that uh, really stuck out to me also as I was working on this was I could not ignore any section of that that page, that panel. I had to pay attention to every single corner and every single stroke. And for me, that's a really great exercise. It's a really important exercise. I had to, to think about it, you know consider uh, what it would do to the piece overall. And I went back over, it's not all in this video, and re, not reworked, but worked over several pieces that just, I wasn't happy with the contrast, or I wasn't happy with how this stood out. You know, the edges, the contrast between edges, managing that. And I can tell you, you know, two days after what you see recorded on this video, I've still been fiddling with it. Just little strokes here and there. It was just very satisfying, too, how small little strokes and changes in the hatching could affect something. You know, it could bring more focus in one area or less focus. This is just a very exciting study. And I really encourage you to do some master studies. Master studies, by the way, are not copies. I mean, you can copy and you might be copying, but a master study should be very defined in your mind. What are you studying? Are you studying the structure and how they drew something? Are you studying uh, the way they put their strokes down like I am? Basically the technique, the composition. Be specific with yourself anytime you do a master study. And you can copy in master studies you can copy uh, a piece exactly if you want to many master studies do and by the way pros do this all the time master studies are a staple of learning to do things better to improve be specific with yourself know what it is you're studying compare you know what you're doing to the artist that you're studying uh, I did allow, as I mentioned before, uh, some of my own style to come in. And I, I would catch myself sometimes doing things automatically and think, okay, can I let this creep in? Or do I want to back out and do it more like it seems you know, Franklin Booth would have done it? And it was a mix of both. Um, but in the end... Uh, this was pretty closely, at least to the way that I perceived, you know, his work is done. Just an absolute joy. Now I, it's got me wondering, how can I apply this to watercolor? And you can. I mean, just the careful management of values alone. Even if you're not using a line. But I might use a line. I mean, the illustrator Charles Santori would use a line sometimes. You know, a line, a painted line in his illustrations. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this was so much fun for me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support of this channel. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.